Okay, well hey neighbors, welcome to the Shed Shop. In this edition of How To, you guys are going to be Dr. Diagnostics. In this video, I'm going to be disassembling this steel MS-170 chainsaw. And yes, my regular viewers, I know you have seen me take apart probably a dozen or more of these models. But, our new viewers may not have seen those videos yet. And so... We're going to do something a little bit different. My regular viewers, you know I like to go completely through chainsaws and I'll refurbish them. I'll replace bearings that need replaced, seals, gaskets, filters, uh, sprockets, um, recoil ropes, everything like that, okay? And I want you guys to pay attention to every component as we disassemble. And I want you guys to go down in the comments. And I want you to comment the stuff that you see that you think needs replaced, okay? So as you see parts come off the saw, you comment if you think it needs replaced. I apologize about the AC in the background, neighbors. Unfortunately, during the summer, it's not really possible to turn the AC off during filming because this big building, and we only have one window AC, and we have a garage door up there that's not insulated. And we have a couple of bays of our ceiling up there. We're waiting for the price of insulation to drop to finish our ceiling. And so we're not 100% insulated yet, okay? And so I have to keep the AC running. Otherwise, the temperature will get so high, it will take an entire another night to cool it down. It is set at 72. I'm actually going to turn the temperature down. I can turn the fan speed down. We'll put the fan on low, but that's the best I can do for that noise. Uh, that being said, neighbors, one of the reasons I am taking another video of a disassembly of a 1120, what are these, the 11, damn it, 1133 series, shit, I forget. The 170s, 017s, 018s, 180s is because we're low on uh, footage right now and I uh, unfortunately do not have the time to do special um, tutorial videos and whatnots. Um, I just have to get saws disassembled, cleaned, and reassembled for sale because the bills are really far behind. Uh, neighbors, I'm going to go ahead and put my Cash App right here. If you would like to donate, donate to the channel through Cash App, uh, you can do so right here. I will also include my email and phone number attached to my PayPal account if you would like to donate to the channel via PayPal. And then we will have my address if you would like to send a cash or check donation. There are things that we are running out of, and I do not want to put them on my credit cards because I'm paying umpteen amounts of interest right now. And so, although I have credit available to purchase items, we are trying to pay the credit cards down because we are losing money fast with the interest we're paying. So we need cleaning supplies. Uh, we need uh, bars and chains. Um... We need, uh, boy, neighbors, I just had a whole list of multiple things that I need. Um, we just need lots of things for the shop to continue to operate and the YouTube channel to continue to operate. So you guys know I don't like asking for money or asking for help. But if you're willing to help, there's the phone number for the PayPal. There's my email, but my PayPal email is different. So pay attention to the screen just previous to this. Here's where we are right now. Here's my address, neighbors. Please don't come shoot up my house. And this is some of the shit we're doing, okay? So, let's get started on this. The first thing I like to do is just go ahead and debar my saw and get that damn bar and chain right out of the way so it doesn't bite us. Okay, this MS-170, let's see. Uh, I believe this is one Dammit Bobby donated, if I recollect correctly. And he thinks with a carburetor it would run. I do think this is the one he gave me. I cannot remember. Okay. And then I also tore down a 180, uh, which there's a little um, piece of the cylinder wall chipped out just at the top of the exhaust roof. And so I think I might try raising that exhaust roof just a tiny bit to salvage that cylinder and put a new meteor piston in it. So, there's our bar and chain neighbors. You tell me if you think it needs replaced or not. Okay. Take a good look. Okay. I'm just going to hang this up out of our way, okay? And uh, next, we'll go ahead and pop our top cover off, okay? Simple, just turn the knob. Um, surprisingly, a lot of times this is broken, and uh, 
there is a hole here where you can add a chain catch on these saws and also the 1123 saws like your 021s, 025s, MS250s. Okay, I need to check this for fluids. That's the one thing I didn't do. I always forget to check fluids. Okay, so we will need to drain some fluids here, but I'm going to try and get away without draining them for now. There's a little bit of oil, not too much. Um, I'm uh, dragging here because I wanted to finish my cigarette. Sorry, neighbors. Okay, so go ahead and replace our, or take our air filter off. Let our gas leak out. Okay, uh, I'm going to start over here. Let me go get the air. And I marked the table. I want to make sure I'm right as to where you guys can see. No, I'm incorrect. Back you up just a little bit here. Where's our mark? It's hard to see. Oh, it's right there. So, yeah, we were good. Okay, because I know a lot of times I get just slightly out of view. Okay, let's go ahead and grab us a scrunch here so we can start popping some stuff off. This dust cover just pops off on this model. No screws. Okay, it's just got two tabs that go in. All right. And then we got our chain brake parts back here. I'm going to go ahead and engage the chain brake to pop the spring off. Put a screwdriver behind it, pop it, keep your hand here so it doesn't go flying. And then you can use your smaller screwdriver. This is called an arm. And you've got a little retaining clip right here, a little E-clip you got to take off, okay? And you don't want to lose that because that's an expensive part when you add the shipping cost in. Lift this arm up, slide it back, it will come off. There is a little spacer right here plastic spacer and that also comes right off okay usually this one's a little stuck okay and then we can go ahead and pop our chain brake band out back here okay uh, yeah it's probably gonna be easier to get our sprocket off so let's do that you've got a large retaining clip here that you can uh, carefully pry off keep your fingers in front of it so it doesn't go flying okay and then your retaining washer so we've got retaining clip retaining washer here's our sprocket neighbors uh, let's see how well you can see it do you think the sprocket needs replaced, neighbors, or do you think it has life left in it and we can reuse it? Now, would you reuse it on your personal saw, yes or no? And would you re reuse it on a saw that you're building to resell as a rebuilt saw? Go in the comments and let me know what you neighbors think. And we got our needle cage bearing. Just upon visual, do you guys think it needs replaced, yes or no? Tell me in the comments. Reverse threaded for our clutch. We'll see if it'll pop off easy. It did, fortunately. Okay, here's our clutch. Um, do you think it's tight? Do you think the springs need replaced? Uh, I know you only have a visual, but you should be able to see if there's play moving around in this or not. You let me know. Do we need clutch springs or not? Rotor washer. Intact, not broken, not cracked. Okay, here's our worm gear. We take a good look at the arm. It does not look worn off to me, but do you think our worm gear needs replaced or not, neighbors? That you can usually only tell when you have it on the saw and to see if it goes uh, into the uh, sprocket pretty well. And that one, that one I can tell you probably doesn't need any uh, replaced at all. Okay, now we can get our chain brake band out a lot easier. Okay, so you just pop that out, pull it and twist it. Looks like it's good. Okay, and then for these parts, we'll come over here and remove this T27 for our chain brake handle. Right here. Okay, set that aside. And now we can go back over to this side. And you just kind of want to work these off together. This is called a lever. Okay, and you just kind of want to pop that up while you pop your chain brake handle up. Okay, once you've got that out, you can work more directly on your chain brake handle and you can uh, lift it up off its tab on this side and that gives you more room to play with it okay pop that up there it should come off there we are you pull that arm out or that lever out okay and then you've got a little spring right here it just sits in there and this keeps your chain brake handle from flopping around and on these I'll just kind of tell you this is the part you have to look at for wear, okay? If this is all flattened out, like down to here, then it needs replaced. So I'm going to tell you this one doesn't need replaced, but I have plenty of these. And if they even have a little bit of wear, uh, I just replace them because when I order them in bulk, they're not that expensive in the end. Now we have two 8 mils for our muffler, okay? 
I uh, don't recommend using an impact, but again, I'm disabled if you're new here, so that's why I do certain things unorthodox. And that's the reason you don't want to use an impact. But that's also why I have like 50 muffler bolts in stock because I do tend to break them sometimes. Right now, I just know I can't hand turn the stuff that's going to be really tight or hard. Okay, so obviously go into comments and say, hey dummy, you broke your muffler bolt, so yeah, you got to replace that. Uh, I will be able to get that out. We'll deal with that a little bit later. Uh, first, before we get in there, you can kind of get a visual inspection. What's your first impressions of the piston, neighbors? First impressions, go ahead and tell me in the comments. Okay. Now let's go ahead and get our uh, recoil off. That will be, we have three T27s left because we already removed our chain brake handle. Still, that's up here. Okay, and that screw's slightly different. It's, it's kind of collared. I don't know what they call that. Okay. And then you got one up here in the front by the oil cap. It's kind of hidden. It's going to be hard to see it, especially if the saw's dirty. So we got to take our caps off. Okay. Then you can just kind of take you some pliers or a little hook, turn that sideways and get it out. Same with your oil cap. Go ahead and make sure I'm staying in view here. There's my mark. Okay, and then pop that one out. I'm just going to set those right there because we're going to put them back on here in a moment. And then uh, lift your recoil off of your gas tank and then you're going to kind of pull the chain brake handle back. Okay, tilt this that way and then it will come out. You just kind of got to shimmy it. It can be hard sometimes if you don't know what you're doing. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and put these caps back on to keep our fluids in. This saw is kind of nice that you can do that because then I can take the small tank and I don't have to hold a whole saw upside down. I can just take the small tank and drain it, okay? So, just get some, some of our schmutz. Oh, sorry about that. There goes the compressor. That's gonna run for a minute. Okay, let's take a moment of break for water. Now that our air compressor has stopped, uh, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we've got two eight mil nuts here to remove our air filter housing. Okay, remove those, there's one, there's two. I'll grab those out later. You can pull that right back, usually. Okay, and then you can carefully remove this shroud. Okay, and then what you're gonna do is pull your trigger forward and then you can, well, we got to have our switch off. And then you can move your throttle lever sideways. And then you uh, pull your choke like that. And pull your car back. Oh, jeez, this one's stuck. Uh, we'll have to pry this one a little bit. It's kind of stuck. Okay. Which isn't a bad thing. It means it has a good seal. You just need a little bit. Wow, I thought it was coming, but it's not. Okay, let's get our switch out of the way first then. No, we can't because of our damn kill switch or our throttle. Uh, choke lever, damn it. Wow, that sucker's tight. Super tight. Okay, there we go. So you just need to pull it back a little bit and then your choke lever can slide out of both your uh, cuberator and your um, damn kill switch. Okay, so then you can pop your kill switch up and gently pull that out of its... You don't. You got to be careful. You don't want to crack this right here, okay? Gently pull that out. Okay, and then pop your wire out, push it through, okay, there's your kill switch neighbors, okay, and then we can get our cuberator off, don't shoot your eye out with the uh, gasolina coming out, there might be pressure in your tank, okay, and then just kind of bend your fuel line down and you can pull your whole gas cap out here, All right, just like so, now that's going to be nice and easy to empty. Now we need a 13 mil socket. This is a place you do want to use if you have it, uh, um, an impact. Well, on these little saws, you really shouldn't because these composite flywheels shear very easily. It's best to put a piston stop in and uh, use a, a wrench or a ratchet. Okay, but this is how I do it. Okay, I'm going to take that nut off just partially. Leave my socket on my nut. Huh, he said nuts. Okay, I'm going to grab some pliers. And I'm legit just going to lift this saw up by the flywheel, okay, and give this a good swift tap or hit, okay. There is a prying method. You can also uh, pry it up, but that just has always worked well for me, um, especially on the smaller saws. Okay, the steels. All right, so now 
we can go ahead and remove our, oh, we've got this little, um, this little grommet here. I forget what this damn thing is called. Um, we want to be careful not to lose this. It is a, an important component. You wouldn't think so, but you can have an air leak right here between your carburetor and intake boot if you don't have that little piece in, okay? So, now we can remove our handle. This is the part that sucks the most, trying to get what's called the AV buffs out. But, they're kind of flat on two sides, and you just kind of want to get behind it with a screwdriver. You can try and pry it off the whole way with the screwdriver, but I bust a knuckle a lot, so I try to get me some pliers behind it, and then pop it off that way. We have three total on this saw. There's that one, and then we're going to have one down here. Okay, are we still in view? Where'd my mark go? Okay, we're good. Trying to get better on the camera for you guys. I really am. Now that we're in Shed Shop 2.0, I'm going to work hard to improve things. But I really would appreciate. I uh, understand if you cannot afford to donate, you guys, and it's okay if you even just don't want to. Um, your views and your comments and your likes are also donations to the channel. Uh, because we can potentially try and improve the amount of money we're making on YouTube. It's only about $40 a month right now on a good month. That's what I make. Okay. But I have to wait until I get to 100 in order for them to send me a payout. But yeah, if you guys can donate, I would really appreciate One more time, I'll put my cash app. And I'll also link it in the uh, description and the pinned comment. My cash app, man and his dog. You'll see it on the screen right now. And then, uh, right following that, you'll see my phone number with my PayPal email, which is different than my regular email. Eventually, I gotta switch that. Okay, this doesn't have screws like the other saws do, but this one, I'll just kind of see if I can pry it first. And if it doesn't go, then I'll just kind of use my scrunch to kind of get behind that AV mount, fold it over, and push it through. Okay, and then on this one, again, the same thing down here I'll try and pry it first I just kind of try and pry the handle out like this one almost went okay got it most of the way out and then I'll just kind of fold it over and push her through and then the final one we can usually get behind it like right here okay try and pry that bad boy out some and if it doesn't come easily again I'll get my scrunch behind one side fold it over push it through as I pull on the handle. Now we've got our handle off, okay? Very good. Now we can take our oil tank out. We're going to have a little bit of oil spill probably, but you pop your oil line right here, okay? Gently pop it out, okay? There's your oil feed tube there, and then you can pull your oil tank out. All right, there's our oil tank. Here's our oil feed tube. What do you guys think? Do you think that oil feed tube is good? Here's our fit, picked up body. Uh, these usually, uh, they, they just, you can clean these. They're just kind of an open setup. There's no um, screens or anything. I mean, there's this plastic screen. I'm sorry. There's no like micro screens in there or anything. So as long as that's clear, it'll pull oil in your tube. Really, to properly fully test it would be a vacuum pressure test to make sure it doesn't collapse or balloon. But uh, probably don't need to do that. See? Trying to show you guys stuff, and my luck is that we're making a hell of a mess, and then I still put that damn tube upside down. Damn it, where's the damn hole? Damn it, I just spilt 90% of the oil out of this thing. That's how smart I am, you guys. That's my luck, though. That's how my life goes. Hashtag persevere, right, neighbors? You only fail if you quit, okay? You only fail if you quit. I have horrendously bad luck. This kind of stuff happens to me all day, every day. But neighbors, I'll keep going, and you guys are part of the reason why you help me keep going. Because you neighbors are freaking awesome, the ones that are still here on this video. Okay, all you neighbors are amazing. I love you guys. Ted Neitzel, um, Daryl Johnson, Rob Weaver, Sarah Weaver, uh, Curtis Baker, Simon Wiggle, Jamie Wikes, Justin B. All you neighbors. Okay, uh, Robert Dancho, Bob Dancho, uh, yeah, there's so many of you guys. Where's my... I am looking for my... Damn, there we go, T27. Okay, now, uh, in order to remove your cylinder, you're going to have to first remove your four cylinder mounting bolts from underneath. They're going to be four T27s. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. And the beautiful thing about these saws is... 
uh, I wish the other clamshells had this set up like this, but the beautiful thing about this one is your pan has separate bolts, okay, like on the 250s, the 1123 series saws, you don't have separate bolts on your pan. Uh, those bolts are your bolts that uh, bolt your pan to your cylinder, okay. So just trying to work that impulse through or that intake boot through. Damn, I can't never say what I want to say. Okay, this one being a little tight. Oh, you know what? I've got my coil wires. I forgot to come out. So you pop that clip out right there. And then this wire, you just unhook it from its channels. Okay, it's got little places that it sits in. And then it can pull right through nice and easy. Okay, so that's why that's not coming out for me. Okay, now that we got that stuff out, this should come out pretty easy. It does. There we are. This one's to get caught again. There we are. Okay. Uh, impulse boot. Let's see, pretty loose, damn it, my intake boot again, this thing has stink bugs in it and stuff, these, um, a new one almost always isn't even that tight, it's usually this part, these are expensive from steel and I can honestly tell you the Pharmatex are garbage and the highways are garbage, I haven't found a good aftermarket one of these plastic rings, so if you're not new to the channel, you know I use my Yama Bond inside here, uh, to help seal this to the cylinder and sometimes I will take the clamps from the other models and sometimes you can get it to fit in there um, with slight modifications okay now we got stink bugs and the thing is we didn't do a vac pressure test on this saw and the reason being because I buy these crank seals I buy 50 sets at a time and so I get them for like probably uh, five dollars a set and so I don't mind replacing them but one could say we look at our piston there okay and one could say if this didn't have a leak if we had vacuum pressure tested this do your neighbors think we should have to split our engine if it doesn't have an air leak you tell me from what you can see trying to turn this over for you okay so you can see all of it there's our piston there's our rings being exposed okay and we'll go to our other side here Okay, and you can look through the exhaust. Would you guys split that if it doesn't have an air leak? You tell me in the comments down below. All right, I am going to go ahead and remove our coil. And the reason being, you don't want to put your coil in your ultrasonic because then you can get moisture inside the coil and you, then you have to bake it in the toaster oven to try and dry it out. We don't want to do that, okay? I am because I'm rebuilding this saw, going to split our pan here from our cylinder and get a ring gap measurement and uh, kind of get a closer inspection of everything. Uh, what you can do is put your scrunch right here on your crank and this is the kind of where your oil pump sits, okay? And you can just break that seal pretty easily usually. Okay, and then push down on this on both sides, and if that doesn't work, hit it with a rubber mallet. Okay, so, our cylinder, there's our cylinder, neighbors. Okay, there's our cylinder. What do you guys think of the cylinder? Do you think it's good to go? And here's our piston, neighbors. Okay, we got some carbon on the top. We'll have to clean that up. Okay, lots of machine lines still. Doesn't appear to have any nicks or breaks or scoring. In my opinion, you guys tell me what you think. Do we have a good piston? Okay, and then we will take off a ring here. And we will flip it over like so. We're going to put it inside our cylinder here. Okay, get it compressed inside our cylinder. And we're going to try and get it as level as we can without it being on the exhaust or intake ports where, whenever possible. And I don't even need to measure this, I don't think. You guys tell me if I should measure my ring gap or by visual appearance do we need new rings, okay? You guys tell me what you think. We'll measure it, but I want you guys to tell me what you think in the comments. And then when we do the reassemble, uh, we'll go ahead and give you guys the ring gap. Do you think we need new rings, neighbors? And then finally, we have our Cooperator. 
which is somewhere over here. Did your neighbors take my Cooperator? You did, see? It's right here. Okay, my Cooperator station's down there, but I have three Cooperators on that have come out of the ultrasonic, and I need to rebuild them, so we don't have any more space over there. So, I'm just going to grab me a Phillips bit here, okay, on our pump side, our metering side, damn it, our pump side, can't remember which is which on this one. We got one Phillips screw, okay, yeah, our pump side. What do you guys think of that carburetor pump? Replace or no replace? Okay. There you go. Do we replace it or would it be good? On your saw, would you replace that if your saw wasn't running or not? Okay. Our gasket is going to rip when we take it off. It's going to get stuck some, I think. I hope not, but I think it will. These thin ones usually do. Yeah, it will. So we're going to put that in some, uh, um, what's it called? I always forget. It's D uh, something alcohol. I forget the name of it. And that'll help take the rest of that off. Now on this side, we've got four Phillips on our metering side. Okay, or flat, Phillips flat. They're technically a Japanese screw or something somebody told me one time. They're not actually a, technically a Phillips or flathead. I forget the name of it. Okay, so pop that right off. Look at all that dirt, neighbors. And then, that too is stuck, so, but as dirty as it is, and it's not moving at all, so uh, I'll just go ahead and cheat and tell you guys that needs replaced for sure. Okay, but we don't want it to stick. So, trying to get it off here. We don't care if it rips. We just don't want to have to scrape all that like that that happened there, okay? So we'll take all that off later. But then you got one more screw here. Hold your metering lever with your thumb while you take this screw out so that everything doesn't go flying because you got a spring in there and whatnot. And then those parts can come out. You're going to have your spring, which fell on the table, okay? You've got your metering lever. And then you've got your the most important part is your inlet needle take a look at that usually a carb kit you can get just the diaphragm kit where it just has the two gaskets and two diaphragms for a little bit cheaper than you can the full kit but what do you guys think does that inlet needle from what you can see need replaced or would you reuse it if you were on a budget you guys tell me in the comments down below so that's it that's how you fully disassemble your MS 170 and that also goes for your 017 your MS-180 and your O-18, okay? And then finally our recoil. Our rope looks very clean, in my opinion. What do you guys think? It pulls nice and easy. I almost always replace the rope. Uh, but on this one, hell, we might not. Or it'll be a situation, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll replace the rope, but I'll cut this as close to the knots as I can so that it's still a good length. And then I'll sell that with the saw in case it ever breaks on them, they have a spare and they don't have to go buy one. They can just keep that in their tackle box in the back of their truck or whatever or in their garage if they're only cutting at home. Uh, at Jimbus, these were the ace things I was telling you about. You said uh, wrapping in an ace bandage. I like the ones that are just preformed. I have two of them, but I, don't, I can't find my other one. I spent hours digging this out last night because I can't afford to buy them. That's the other things. You know, if you guys give donations, stuff like this to help me be able to work, uh, with a little bit less pain, have some support on my wrist because of my carpal tunnel and my arthritis and my nerve damage. So, uh, one more time, you guys, uh, if you can donate, the Chainsaw Redeemer needs products for the shop. We need cleaning supplies. We need brake parts cleaner. We need super clean. Uh, we need uh, green clean. Uh, we need bars and chains to complete our saws. Um, we need some different air filters. Uh, and the Chainsaw Redeemer needs medical supplies. And also, you guys, uh, I can't afford my medications this month either. So that would be another thing. If you guys are willing and capable of offering a donation, uh, Uncle and I are spending a lot on meds. He doesn't have insurance. I do. But one of my medications is not covered by my insurance. And I'm not even going to tell you guys the cost of it because it's astronomical. But it's for my liver. Um, I have a... Uh, um, failing liver basically um yeah because of my autoimmune disease so that's it neighbors uh i hope you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up please 
go ahead in the comments and tell me what needs replaced, what doesn't need replaced. Uh, tell me both both options. Say it's your saw and you're on a budget. Tell me what you would reuse and what you would replace. And then if you happen to be a small engine guy or you happen to be somebody that's a hobbyist rebuilding saws to resell, uh, tell me what you would use. Tell me what you would replace. And most people are just selling it as is. I do sell it with a warranty, so I go a little bit further than the average guy. But I want to know where, what extent you guys would go to with this saw. So go into comments and tell me. Leave extra comments, double comments, triple comments. I don't care. Comment as you watch the video. Some people do that. I got a few of you guys that you'll comment as you watch the video and see different things and have five or six comments on the video. That's great. That helps the channel. Donate your comments if you can't donate financially, you guys. That's it. Be kind to one another. Everyone, everyone, everyone is facing battles. And a lot of times, we know nothing about their battles. So if we're not kind to them, it can ruin their day. And it can potentially even be the final straw that breaks the proverbial camel's back of their life. And they could take their life. Uh, so you guys, I'm going to actually put the uh, suicide hotline right here. Um, if any of you guys are struggling, you call this suicide hotline. Or... You call a Chainsaw Redeemer, okay, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If it's something like that, you can call me even on my day off on Saturdays, okay. So I love all 8 billion of you neighbors out there, even though that's a damn lie. But I gotta keep saying it because I want it to be true. Even though I suck at it, I do love you. So that's gonna be it, neighbors. Until next time. Hashtag persevere, right?